Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Walter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Visit me here at The Bio Dude Houston, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2. I promised you guys this video for about a year ago, <laughs> and it took Zach and I about that time frame to plan this. We designed it, yep. we executed it, and I gotta tell you guys, I am blown away. We have some really exciting developments in the PVC line enclosures, the Bio Dude, exclusive by cages yep yeah you can find us at reptilecages.com we made this enclosure specifically for josh i'm really excited and you know you guys have you guys have got my pvc or i guess zach's pvc enclosures yep. through me with five years exclusive you yep. know that we are constantly working to try and you know improve them and Definitely. there are some improvements that we want to show you guys um, after we discuss the improvements to the current model we're going to talk about how this one works the lighting that we're using and of course, the inhabitants, which is a group of Aki's monitors, which I, they're gonna love it. They're gonna lose their minds in here. So, oh, it's huge. So Zach, let's talk about this cage. So now what we're changing for your excuse, exclusive line is we're using tempered glass instead of the polycarbonate just because like, everyone said tempered they wanted tempered glass. glass. So we'll do it. And then a lot of people had complaints about the center brace being uh, obstructive yep. when viewing their animals. So now we'll do a clear you know, acrylic center brace, just so there's no obstruction. You can Please see everything, it's clear. transparent. Yeah. And then for his exclusively, like not for his, that he's selling, but for Josh himself, we did a, a, a window here so you can see the substrate. You yep. can see all the, the microclimates in there. Yep, and we're gonna be able to see all the different microbiological processes from the different funguses yep. and molds through this substrate window. We are gonna have approximately 18 inches of Terra Sahara substrate in here. For this pair of Aki's monitors, it's going to rule. It's going to be perfect. Um, and you know, this is just the entrance level of the tunnel system. So this is supposed to be an area. If they want to come down here, that we'll be able to see them through this section. So, you know, and something that he did, which we got to point this out. Oh yeah. Oh man, I love it. Come in here and look at this. Tool the little, a little bit there for him. Yep. And you know, he see we see and see this right in yep. here so it this looks so so clean so very clean so zach tell, uh, tell me a little bit about the uh about uh, there are the fixtures that we're using that come yeah. with the enclosure so we use these arcadia ones it's easier it's transparent you can see what size bulb you can use you know obviously it's going to be up to the individual i can almost guarantee you never need a 250 watt bulb in a pvc enclosure yep. unless you were looking to cook a chicken okay. like they insulate That's way true. too well like yep you're gonna kill whatever it is in there with yep. that size bulb. Yep. Like it's crazy, that's way too much. Yep. And we did do extra vents here yep. um, on the back. Yep. So we have that's a right. total of one, two, three, three four. four. Larger, longer vents uh, there in the back. We have, t we have two 22 inch glow and grow LEDs in there. The, we, it comes, this tank has three of the Arcadia fixtures that Zach mentioned. We are using an Exoterra Solar Glow on the right, 160 watt. And then on the left, we are using a Zoomed Repti Basking Spot Lamp of 150 watts. So I'm gonna be checking the temperature in here regularly. I'm gonna be checking the humidity to make sure that we're not getting too hot, but we got we know that Aki's love a hot spot. You know, they like it to, Very they well. like, yeah. So we're gonna be using some rocks as well. So my vision for this was to kind of have it grow taller and work our way down because this bulb right here, the reptile needs to be at least four, 12 inches away from it yep. for the, to get the level of UVB that is going to be acceptable for the actors. Yep. We're also using an Arcadia 14% UVB, um, which has a really, really high Ferguson rating, which I have my uh, solar meter, uh, which I'm actually going to show you guys really quick. Let me see if I can actually get it. So the, the solar grow is over here. Okay, and we're, gonna, we're getting right around an, an 11, which is pretty high. So I'm going to make sure that, you know, that hot spot's going to be pretty adamant because it's a pretty... pretty and cool one thing a lot of people don't know about these bulbs is when they, they'll continue to last for a year. Yep. However, when they fail, they may feel, fail with more power. Yep. So when they wear, wear out, they may be put out more UVB than the, you need, rather than less. So always, like, definitely always check them. So we kind of we kind of got a little bit of a layout in here. I but we start adding some substrate. Yeah. So initially, what we're going to do is we're going to get the base layer of substrate in 
and then we're gonna add in some other stuff and get it mixed. So, all right, dude, how about right. I grab a shovel, you grab a yep. shovel. So this over here is what they were kept in. I have a special lid on top. There's right still here. a bunch of darkling beetles oh, in here. right there. Oh, there's a, but look, check it out, guys. Ooh. They're, they're doing the dirty. Making some babies. That's right. All right, I'm gonna put these guys here into the cleanup crew bin. And they can just go in there because there's hundreds of ice pods. So I actually removed a ton of substrate from here. And the best part about it. We need it a bucket. Is we do need a bucket. <laughs> So, people are going to ask, well, how does this hold the weight? Oh, uh, engineering, definitely. Racing, um, wanting it more, all those things play a factor in it. I would say, though, uh, the way that the enclosures are built and designed is to distribute the weight through the bottom evenly versus some other companies who maybe do it the wrong way and it is engineered to not distribute weight at all. So ours all distribute the weight evenly through the base. And then this specific enclosure is on a rolling base. The base is made out of two by sixes and PVC. Um, and I did it that way because there's oh, six tall, 36 wheels underneath it to hold all the weight. Um, and so it can roll easy still. So you, after this enclosure is full, one person will be able to roll it around without any problem. I just gave myself a whole arsenal of, of substrate. Love it. Never get it. Alright. So, one more bucket left. Here, get a shot of this. Oh, there's super worms so in there's here. a super worm and there's a cricket that was hiding in there. A bunch of stuff. There's some roaches. Alright. It's pretty cool. Super alive. Yep. Yeah, which is fantastic. Okay. Well, this side of this big mama. I'll just put her in there right now. Hey. Oh no! Okay. No, I. She landed on her back. I okay. Okay. There we go. All right. <laughs> yup. So. Okay. I dig that. I'm gonna move this out of the way. I know guys, we got a lot of stuff. So <laughs> the next thing I wanna add. Whew. What do you wanna do next? Let's get Do you wanna position this? this? Should we try to get this positioned how you want it? Yeah. And held up here? Yeah, so I'm gonna have to move. So another cool thing about the enclosure is they're strong enough. People can sit inside of them, like don't do it though. Like don't be an asshole. You can sit inside, put the light Don't be in, an asshole. Let's stuff like that. that. Um, <laughs> You know, other companies, yeah, they may be cheaper. They may do things different, but they're overlooking certain things. And when you buy an enclosure from us, you're not just buying the enclosure for the materials. You're unfortunately have to pay for some of the time that went into engineering and things like that, which well, that's can be very product. time consuming. Yeah, you know, people, no people ask me like, I do, why do you sell a bag of substrate for $50? And I say, well, you have no idea how many of my hours it took exactly. to get that right. And it spans years, yep, years yep. and years and years. So let me show you guys this. You're like, this doesn't look like Sahara. It is old Sahara that got almost ruined by my mist king. So I've been letting this sit for months. There is dwarf white isopods in here, which probably will not make it. Um, there is dwarf purple, which will. There is earwigs. There's a bunch of stuff in here. So I'm gonna be using this as a mild compost jumpstart for this massive enclosure to try to help with the level of bioactivity, uh, just overall. Um, so as far as the positioning goes, I think this is great. This is up where we want it. So I'm gonna dump this entire thing in here. Sure, that sounds good. I think I can. Or you can. The company is gonna close strong. <laughs> you just set it in there and flip it over. Quick hands, you catch that? That was quick, very quick. Nice, okay. So the enclosures do come with silicone. Um, it's up to you if you want to use it, but if you're doing a bioactive setup, it's kind of redundant because 
you're not keeping fish in here. There's a substrate, so any moisture that is spilled is gonna be absorbed by the substrate versus having an enclosure with tiles or paper towels where liquid may come out. So that's what you seal it. And if you guys so are I don't require it. How much substrate is this, Bio Dude? To answer your question, it's probably around 55 bags. I don't know, maybe that's. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a 55 is an extra inch. 25. So this one's super thick. This one's, yeah, this is this is a third of a. I'm going to take some dirt out before I decide to, to lift it in. Okay. And then I'm going to work on. So I'm going to start beginning my other top layers here of areas that I want to help promote. Sure. I'm gonna put that piece of cork right there. So th this cork bark here, so the cork that is embedded in the substrate is eventually going to become fuel for your substrate. And when I say fuel, it essentially is going to be slowly eaten, broken down by your you know, microbiological processes, your springtails and isopods and things like that, putting essential stuff back into the soil. So it's, and it's gonna help with the tone retention which is super, super important. So I have a couple things here. I have this giant piece of Mopani that I've been saving for a real special build. <laughs> Probably have had this, um, oh man, for a while. Okay, um, but I am gonna use this. I'm gonna put it here on the other side towards the front. Um, so that way I can, There we go. So this is gonna be sticking up above the substrate. Oh, sure. So that's gonna help lead us into a nice crevice type of area to rock and roll. All right, so this weighs about 6,000 pounds. Yeah, that's what I said. This stuff, manufacturing it, figuring it out how to do it on a bulk scale is one of the most daunting processes ever. Oh, man, so. Get a nice shot of this. Yeah, man. Love it. All right. And then we have the bags. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start pushing Let's this down here. I'm just saying that because I got this. And That's I also, good. I don't plan on having the substrate be even all the way. Well, it wouldn't be in nature. Yeah, exactly. So we got a couple yeah, bags here that we had in the prior Aki's enclosure. Well, not the prior one, but I removed some preemptively for this video just to help out with uh, storage and things like that. So we're going to dump this in. I can already feel the heat. Oh, it's warm. I love it. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna really. So much space. There's a lot of space. They're gonna have a deep network of tunnels. They're gonna breed in here. Babies are just gonna pop up. And the day that I come into work and I find baby Aki monitors in here, oh, will be cool probably one of the best days of my career. Not kidding. That um, so cool. Oh, this is gonna be so cool so now we guys got to focus a little bit on the front right and we have just the thing to do that another giant thing of sahara <laughs> all right so i don't want to ruin my end cap here all right all right all right no i just spilled all the leaves okay. Okay, so here's a question. We've been doing great oh, yeah. with this. Should we Trust open up this other side or should we just leave it how it is and then just dump this last bit in? I mean, I would say leave it at this point because we yeah. don't want to spill stuff in that door track and we have a vacuum out too. All right, so let me get the shovel. Okay. Brittany's husband made this specifically for shoveling BioDuke substrate. Thank you, James. Solid aluminum. Construction. 
Okay. All right. I need. I'm gonna go grab one more bag. Sure. Just when you thought you had enough substrate. <laughs> so then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the spag moss. We're gonna put the spag moss in at the very top. So if you want to go ahead, um, we can use some of the water to get it like somewhat saturated. You're good. Oops, we're spilled over the water here. It's a huge one on this watering can. Did you cut the tip of this can off? Oh, uh, I didn't. Somebody did. Tiffany. She would know better. Okay. I love it. So this is pretty much exactly what I wanted to see. We have a section under here that they can go and create tunnels. They have this whole section here that can go from here to here to there. We have a little section sub tunnel under here that's all via connected via tubes and flats. I dig it. And I'm going to take, I have a bunch of live oak leaf litter. We and they are going to dump the spag on top. I dig it. That looks outstanding. Oh, we'll get it. Okay. Then we got a bunch of Bioshock. It's a lot. Exactly. Yeah. Holy smokes. And it's not too bad. Oh. <laughs> Good stuff. So this is what you need to create a proper environment for your apple. So. All right. And then we're going to put the moss on top, and then we're going to mix the crap out of everything. Definitely. Yep. That's wet enough. So I think the best thing to use is, is going to be the shovel. Go for it. Honestly, yep, yep, the yep. small aluminum shovel, wherever that went. Right so here's a question. What is the most substrate you've seen somebody put in an enclosure? This is, for me, this is, <laughs> besides the tank I did for the Parsons Chameleon yep. at the DFW Reptarium. Yep. Which, ta this tank, that tank is about four times the size of this one. Wow. Um, this, this is, for me personally, this is the most. Sure. And again, I love that I have this. This is just awesome. freaking awesome. And look at, there's already a roach in this in this cork round down here, a cricket. If you take a look down there on the acrylic, you can see that little guy in there. Or girl. Gotta be careful. Yep. I have my head, have my head. Uh, the light fixtures? Yeah. Yep. All right. All right, dude, let's swap it out of your turn. All right. It's really warm in there. It is warm in there. I'm really anxious to see how hot it's going to get. Oh, it's going to warm. I have a feeling they're going to love being out to bask and do their thing. So now, after this, we can get building, which is... What I'm most excited for, because we got the build, get the initial layer in, and then what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to be misting this enclosure to get a lot of the dust off the sides yep. and all this and that, and then obviously I might have to add more soil if it does end up uh, getting more like compact. So as it settles, it's going to change. As your microphone and stuff in there settles, it's going to change. So. Those are all things to uh, keep in mind, you know, just when dealing with that stuff. But he's mixing like a pro. And I honestly can't wait until they have a network that you can just see right in front of you. And every they, will, they will in no time. Yep. That looks awesome. That's coming right along. Okay. I'm gonna start getting the tubes. So I definitely want to, I'm going to be building up 
definitely gonna be building up this end. So sure. I think what's in this next is get the bugs. So guys, we have a lot of different bugs here. So I have an entire arid springtail culture that's been going for, as you can see, since 828.19 that we pull from each week. I'm just gonna dump this entire thing in here. Then we got some bugs. Zach, do me the honors of showing sure. showing the crowd what the what the what other ones look like. Beetles. Oh, there's a bunch of isopods in there. What do we got? Some some powder blues. It's out there. Yep. And then some yep. orange scabers. We got scabers. some powder blues, some orange scabers. Yep. Some of the dark lean beetles. Ones. We're gonna be adding a ton of super worms. Yep. Two hundred and fifty of them. I'm um, obviously gonna be watching for dark lean beetle production to make sure Go they don't it. overpopulate. Yep. And I'm going to do the same thing with mealworms. Yep. So we're dumping all this stuff in here. I'm pretty excited. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take these cork bark pieces and I'm just going to spread them all along the top. So the bugs, the bugs are going to, are going to thank us for this because it's going to create a ton of different little things for them to hide under to munch on to help inspire a little bit more your, of your biological processes. So I'm gonna take these dudes, dump them on in. There you go. All right. What else we got? We got the darkling beetles, the isopods. Some of these guys in. I don't wanna just dump them and crush any of them. The isopods. In there. Okay. So I would like to start on the left. Sure. Definitely. Since the left Definitely. end is gonna be yep. a little bit bigger. Definitely. Thank you. So after we kind of get the cork bark and stuff yeah. settled in, I'm gonna take a look and see if we want to add any more stuff. Sure. So first, I want to rock and roll with some of the tubes that we got. Like this. Well, here, look at this. You can already see some of the moisture. Yeah, you can already really you can already really see deep. some of the moisture pockets from that one layer I oh. did to 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 jumpstart this deep middle layer that the bio shop's going to take longer to hit. Yep. I literally stacked it, you know, like I'm trying playing trap cards or something. All right. So I also have been saving these for some time. Oh, that's pretty awesome. They, look, look at this. That's what I'm talking about. Got wood, yo. <laughs> <laughs> so I want this. So do, what do you think? I think this should be the sure. top. Yep. yep. Like the top portion. Yep. So how do we All get this? Stuff. Because I'm gonna network the cork bark inside oh. of there. There's gotta so, be a way. There will be. If you get another branch, then we can lock them together and build like a driftwood pile. Yeah, I want that to be as high yep. as we can get it. Yep. We also have. I, mean, we I also have now. this. There we go. This oh, that looks outstanding. And then we have this beastly cork tube here. right here with some moss. Yep, yep. So maybe I don't know how I feel about that. I don't like that. That one you can slip underneath some lower level basking if they are side with like this. That'll work. Yep. All right, that's even just a little bit higher or close yep, to the. Yep. Just a little round. I think I got something like this. Oh, I forgot. I gotta dump these dudes in. Like that. Pull that in. There you go. So, so next, we got these smaller pieces here. Oh sure. As well. So do we want to stack? So I'm thinking about kind of going like this. That'll be cool. Like so here, so we give them some more spots to hide. Here, actually, no. I know what I want to do with this. Oh, even better. A little entry, entryway. If the male would just fit, the female could fit no problem. Here's another little round. Oh, uh, we, we we got a bunch of flats. Yeah. So. Well, some some stuff on the other side. It's gonna have to. You know. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I'm gonna keep it. Well, I wanted to use rocks ooh, ooh. for for the right side. So if we put another cork ground here, you might be able to put some stones in here if you put another bag of we sunscreen in there. We absolutely should. So we have a cork ground here, and we'll, we also have this bad boy right here. Yeah, but do you want to hide that one? That one's a beauty. I don't want to hide it. <laughs> okay. 
okay. this one, I would put it like this. Maybe. Then I get some towels underneath here. And then I'll grab the other bag of substrate. Right. Something. Yeah. And, and then, then you put the substrate in there. there. Okay. Right. That might even be fine if you had a bigger box. This little area there. And then some stones. I do. Yeah, I think I know. So what I want to do is I want to get this ghost wood up about six more inches. Okay. And I think I know exactly how to do that. Okay. So I'm gonna grab the bone stone. Nice. Yes. I'll pull this out so we can wait for it. Okay. So, again, please correct me if you feel like this could be done a little bit better. Hold on. It's looking pretty good. Yay, nay. Yeah, yeah, it's looking good. So, how secure is it? Now it's good. It like locked in. Okay. Well, well, that's much better. And then if we can keep it like that and then still get that plate. Okay. Well, these will be nice rocks. Stones, rocks are nice because then they hold the heat overnight. I think keep I'm going to use all the bone stone we have. All right. This is tricky. Very tricky. And that's, this is going to be for the right side. But if we need more. This is tricky with this cork around here. Yep. It's in there. I don't know. Check this out. There you go. Yeah, that's what you can do. Nice. I can't. I can't. That's mud. Done. Yeah. yeah. Done. That's really good. Okay. Really good. So we got some more ghost wood pieces that we can kind of come out of here. Sure. Um, especially since we can get closer to the UV from here and on this side. Okay. So, okay. What do you think, dude? We got a bunch of, we got some cork plants that we could use. I like this big one. Yeah, I got another crazy yeah, one over here. I like here. this one. Wow. Okay. Okay. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. Oh, that one's nice. Yeah. I like those ones that have the... Oh, that would be nice. Yup. Yup. That's good. That's good stuff. We have anything that can we can kind of keep I think so. keep continuing I on. These and then you got this big chunk, yeah. And then we have all these. We have, this, we have all we this. Have this too. Look at that. Look at these big logs. This one would be perfect. You lay it on its back, it'll hold it right up. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do all that. Right. Let's see how much sand's in the doors, huh? A little bit. Sorry. <laughs> if you can't handle that noise, uh, we obviously will clean it out with a vacuum. But there's worse noises in the world than that. That's true. That's very true. Something like this, huh? Yeah. And then if we can get something underneath this end to hold that end up. So, so we have the flat here. here. Oh, here you go. This, what is this, Madagascar? What do you it's think of that? Oh, that looks good. Put this under here to hold this up. So prop nice. it all up. Huh? Okay. That'll work. And then I'm gonna put some, I'm gonna stones. put the rest of the rocks. Oh right here, here and then we can build up like behind it okay yeah looking good so rocks guys again i'm gonna find a way to ship them heed my words i will figure it out and i afford them uh, ship them affordably is the key word um but rocks are really great because they take in a lot of heat which helps with excellent basking zones mm -hmm for your reptiles and honestly a lot of them use them for a sense of security because they're tight they're sharp and again since they're wild animals you know it's really important to nurture that protective nature that they seek in the wild especially with this species because ackies are known for being really smart 
uh, and we'll figure it out. So it's really important that when we do work with them that we are providing them deep, deep substrate as well as, you know, yep. have all the, all the other necessary parts of their husbandry. Plus the word on their nails. So on. this is good. I already tell this is going to be really hot. Yeah. That just looks amazing. So what we need is some depth up here. And we need some a little bit of depth here in the back, and then we can get the rest of this covered. Whoa! Here we go. Look at this thing. That, well, that's really nice. That would be cool. Okay, we're we're making progress here. So what if we? Because even this can go. Okay, I think I have an idea here. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that's redundant. Yeah, it looks good though. I mean, in the middle, right in the middle. What if it's like? Or that? Yeah. <laughs> Let it fall down, see if it tips down. It doesn't want to. It's being held in oh, place with that. It's perfect. Yep, that's really nice. <laughs> that's pretty cool. People ask me, Bob, dude, why, why don't you use backgrounds? That's why. Yeah, you can okay. make your own. And we also have the water dish. I always yep. tell you guys, I always build around the dish. So I'm going to be putting the water dish right here, right in the front, super easy to be accessed by the critters, you know. And then I'm going to be putting a, uh, a cork bark flat in here, right in the middle. So if insects get in here, it floats, they can climb out, jump out. Um, this kind of helps keep your water cleaner for a little bit longer. Now we also got, we got this beautiful cork tube. Dude, I want you to do honors for this one. Ooh, this is a cool one. That is, that's the cool one, man. Okay. This is tough. But Acne's are pretty mischievous. It'll be climb. Mess around. Guys, we have a bunch of amazing yeah, so this one I'll probably put like this so they can get in and then provide security here because it's closed up by the back of the enclosure. They just I dig down. It. It's perfect. Here we got, we got a lot of the smaller hunks right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> there we go. We're good. Okay. And then I'm going to put this Here. I don't know. I don't care that this is like somewhat open. I want it to be more busier just here in this front to give sure. them lots of different ledges and opportunities. Sure. Uh, we got a lot of like branches, like ghostwood chunks here. I love how that ghostwood is stacked on the left with the rocks. Oh, Seriously, like those rocks are going to be like a great basking. Yep, yep, I think so. And they'll hold the heat. That's probably where they'll put their hives over there. Like, look at this. You know, no, I, got, I got this piece that I've been like kind of saving for something. Let's see. Boom. Oh, that is cool. It's the stand for the wood. <laughs> That's perfect. I can take it. So we yep. got some yep. grapevine pieces. No, no. Are we happy with this, or do we want to add anything else in here? Well, I would say it looks like where you'd find them in the wild. Yeah, it does, like the shrub land. Yep, yep. Um, like a tree that maybe fell over from a storm. Yep, with just random rocks yep. that fell along the cliffside. Yep. Um, with a lot of different access to a lot of tunnels for their microclimates. Yep. And being in like a busy showroom, they're obviously going to feel really secure in an yep. enclosure like this. So we have, we have some the visual port, barriers. We have some tubes that are, those are half tubes. I don't know if we need them. I wouldn't. I think this is looking great. It's okay. going to promote the burrowing on now, the natural behavior. The last question. Plants. The plants. Do we even want to bother? Because we could put this bad boy, like right here, which it's cool because this is going to bloom yeah, flowers. Yeah. Um, we also, cool. you know, could, we also have a spot oh. right here. I don't want it to or block the basking. Let's do it. Let's definitely put one right here. Oh, I think that'll be cool. Up yeah. there for sure. And then we'll just on it. And then if we want the other, we'll see about the yeah, other yeah. one. Because I don't know about it. I don't know about that either. Yeah. Kind of apprehensive. It'd be kind of cool actually to have it there because you might see some of the root structure. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you dummy. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that looks good there, I think. I don't know if I'd even use one. Nope, I'm not. I'm gonna pull it out. So yeah, I think it's time that we talk about the lizards. Oh, definitely. I think we've been patient. So we've been we're in here for the safety. Oh, look, we got another tube. 
Yep. So now to get them out of the tube, what a they're both in the tube. Oh yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's the worst possible. Come too. on, let's go. Oh boy. God darn it. There's a leg. Goodbye tube. Yeah. See if we can get them to hang on to. to... They're all the way in. I know the tail. <laughs> Here, I'll get her. Is this the male or the female? I'm not sure. I don't want to pull by the tail. I don't want to pull by the tail. If I can get it to hang on to me, which is obviously that's a defense tactic they use. Yep. Getting in the crevices. Yep. yep. Oh my God, we did an Aki's monitor video. We can see they're in there and they just don't, they want nothing to go. Come on, else. There's one. There you go. There you go. Come on. Check it out, guys. So. Rare Earth Lineage, these yep. guys are absolute, one of the coolest monitor lizards that you can keep. Uh, they love that UVB, that hot spot, and I love their tongues. Like they are just too oh, freaking they're so cool. intelligent. Yes, they're really smart. Like a lot of them, you know, you can almost train with different types of conditioning yep. to do what you want. Were you able to get the- No, no, All I right. figured. Gonna... He'll come on when he's ready. I'm gonna put her right here. Okay. Or like that could be to, to get it to go forward. There you go. Hey, dude. There you go. He's like licking his tongue at me. Hey, dude. Here. There we go. I'm coming for you. Gotcha. There we, go. there we go. Come on. Back a little. Can you just kind of hold on? Yep. yep. Oh. He's, he's... I'm not pulling. He's no. he's wiggling his. Yep, yep, yep. I'll just gently hold on to his tail. <laughs> the push, struggle. Push, push him back forward, back this way. And just be patient because I'll just slowly hold my hand here and let him back go down to me. There we go. There we go. Watching Bio Dude slowly destroy a cork bark tube. There we go. So are. that way you get his there lizard out. Are. You got him? Here's Zach. Enjoy. So that's the big end. Yep, yep. Look at them. So they suck up air. That also helps them hold into their cork rounds. You can see how inflated he is right now. They're really neat. Yeah, I'm adding these like flat pieces. Really smart. Just for fun. Whipping around, wondering what's going on. New place. Get a new house. It's gonna be dynamite. This is just out. This is outstanding, dude. This guys, this is the probably the coolest build I've ever got to do. Hands down. Oh, the the Parson Chameleon build, like I got to help them put the substrate in. That was really cool. But this, this just makes my year. Okay. This is awesome. All right. Hey, dude. Well, you're not, a dude. All right. Are we ready? Definitely. All right. So I will. We just kind of. Put them in there. See where they want to go. Here. here you go. There you go up there too. Oh, there they go. She goes. So he's just gonna go back. Well, he's a little chilly. He's, he's pretty confident here. He's like, there I don't go. know about this. Here, I'm gonna dump you off. I want to see if you'll sit there for a minute. Let's get some nice, go. nice pictures. So, Christina, what do you think? Everything so, you know, we're definitely going to get criticism. Well, we didn't use a background. It doesn't need it. I love it. I yeah. love everything about it. I love how the wood is just kind of stacked. Definitely. It honestly looks like at the beginning of a cliff side, like oh, how definitely. wood is yep. going to fall yep. out in, in a yep. harsh shrub land that's oh, really look at her freaking right there. hot. Yep. And there she goes. She's out running around. Look at her. Oh, I love it. Oh, this is absolutely amazing. And it promotes so much positive behavior. So, so guys, there's probably about 400 pounds of substrate in here. Oh, easily. Well, yeah, oh, so, yeah. So, you know, you guys, I'm sure you guys realize there's no way this cage can hold that. And I'm telling you, Zach, oh, yeah. he, and he, he, he engineered to be able to handle Definitely. this Definitely. weight. And that is something that makes this line different. Definitely. And with the new tempered glass, with the completely clear front, Yep, center brace. It's yep. just it's just one more way that you know we can try to make everything just look cleaner, better. She is just she's she's, she is cruising out, and he's just soaking in the soaking in the uh, soaking in the heat. And plus, making enclosures that can hold your products, substrate stuff like that, yep. it promotes uh, ethical. It does. Keeping of them because they don't ask him out of the wild, so the least we can do as keepers 
just provide them the most naturalistic environment that yeah. we possibly can. And guys, I'll be doing update videos on this, and, I, and I'm telling you, once they start developing their, you know, their different tunnels and stuff, especially once those moisture layers oh, yeah. become established, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, look at her go. And they, like I said, they're going to love that behind part there because it was she, she a bit guarantee she can get back in there. It's safe. You know. Yep. I think it's John. Look at him. He's so confident. I'm going to move. Yeah, he's very. I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. Sure. Look here, get a shot. And guys, you can come and see this terrarium at the Bayou Dude Houston. You can come, you know, maybe if the Ackies are out, maybe give them a horn warm or two because they love their worms. Oh yeah. And this is a great representation of the quality of, you know, cages and closures. Oh, like yeah. I, I can't, I guys, I have never met somebody as ingenious as Zach when it comes to figuring out ways to problem solve and to just, you yep. know, just to look at a problem and be like, oh yeah, that's fine. Because, yeah, I can t I stack, so I don't want anyone else to do it, but I can stack an enclosure full of dirt on top of this one. I can engineer to do that. Yep. But don't do it. Like, if you don't yep. know what you're doing, don't do it. Yeah, look at that. Well. That's great. Guys, my name's Josh. You, you guys know me, bio dude, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4, YouTube, or Saturday, 10 to 2, Saturday, um, you know, I'm so sorry. YouTube, yep. Instagram, Facebook, you guys know the worst. I'm just, I'm ecstatic right now, Zach. Yeah, yeah, you know me, Zach, Reptile Cages. We build crazy stuff. Check us out. Buy the bio dude stuff. The dude abides. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. Did you? Yeah.